Okay. Did you start that Facebook yet? Yes. Okay. Um, we're ready to go then. Let's let's rock it. Hello, Facebook followers. We are getting ready to go here. You're behind the studio with Ken D. Foster. We're uh, at the Voices of Courage show today, and we're talking about the courage to expand what's possible. It's going to be an amazing show. Look forward to um, having some uh, amazing guests on the show today. I've got two guests coming in, Ryan McCormick and Neil Mintz, both of which are very successful business owners, but we're going to be talking about consciousness and business today. So we are just about ready to go, and uh, I think we are live. Voices of Courage is sponsored by Candy Foster. It's time to take a journey to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome everyone. It's been a brilliant day today. Hope you're having a great day out there. Welcome to Voices of Courage. Today, this show is titled The Courage to Expand What is Possible. You know, in 1927, the greatest minds of physics attended a meeting in Brussels to discuss the subject of consciousness and the power of the human mind. None of these physicists could explain why their experiments and their observations were being greatly altered by an indescribable force which they called consciousness. Where did it come from? How was it created? How does it work? How can we access it? This force has eluded authoritative minds for thousands of years, and today, we are going to discuss consciousness and how to apply the principles to increase your success, your prosperity, and your health. So, this show is really about helping you to explore the powerful possibilities of your mind, the possibilities that are so far unnoticed by many people. And my hope is that with this show that you're going to be able to expand your thinking, realize a little bit more of what's possible in your business and in your life, and be able to take your life to a new level. So I was practicing what I preached today. I was driving down to the show, and uh, a friend of mine uh, had given me several jazz al albums. Now, I have not been a big fan of jazz over the years, but I thought to myself a few weeks back, I'd really like to learn how to appreciate jazz, right? And so he had sent me this CD with all these, uh, the top jazz players in the world. He's a friend who's uh, in love with jazz. He just loves it. So he sent me the best of the best, all the best artists. And I put the jazz music on, and I'm driving down to the studio. And what's happening with myself uh, <laughs> being uncomfortable, right? So anyway, what happened is, as I approached the studio, all of a sudden... I was feeling really like I wanted to crawl out of my skin. And in that moment, something shifted. And all of a sudden, I started to be able to hear this music in a different light. Well, I submit that that's what we need all to do to be able to take our, our lives to a completely new level. If you're in a place where you are having uh, problems, let's say, in your business, right, your greatest thinking is not going to solve what, where you are. Your greatest thinking has probably got you in the challenges where you are. So what do we need to do? We need to expand our thinking, expand our consciousness. Well, how the heck do we do that? You know, the uh, scientists, the neuroscientists tell us now there's 100 million nerve cells, 100 million nerve cells in our brain. And those nerve cells can combine to trillions of combinations, right? Trillions of them. But most of us think that we uh, are stuck in certain ways of thinking or certain ways of doing or certain ways of having things, right? Well, that's only because we're not using 
all those trillions of connections that we have within our, within our, our own brains to be able to do that. So how do you attain different states of consciousness? And what, what are different states of consciousness? You know, the yogis describe it as sat, chit, ananda. Sat is absolute, non-changing truth. Chit is ever conscious, and ananda is ever new bliss. So interesting, isn't it? What is that place where we go to unending truth, right? Most of us are, are, are living in, in a lot of delusion. I think there's a lot of uh, folks, and myself included for many, many years, thinking that I was stuck with the way I was raised, the schooling I had, the job I had. And the truth was so far from that, right? But I had to get out outside of my thinking to be able to do that. So I started to study and I started to start to understand my own states of consciousness, right? I started to ask those questions, you know, why am I here? You know, how was I created? Um, you know, how does it work for me in this world, right? So listen, um, consciousness is also described this way. Three states. There's a subconscious mind of everything we've experienced in this world, okay? This lifetime, and I believe others, but uh, your belief is up to you. Um, there's a consciousness, right, where we're conscious, where we're just seeing what's going on in the moment, right? So the subconscious mind, everything that happened in the past, the conscious mind, and then there's a superconscious mind. So the superconscious mind is that place where we want to tap into those higher resonant uh, vibrations or energies that we tap into to get the, I the ideas, the principles, the understanding of what we need to do in the moment, right? So ha if I haven't lost you yet, let me just say this. When superconsciousness des uh, descends into the realms of imagination, it is called superconsciousness, okay? When superconsciousness descends into the realms of imagination, it is superconsciousness. When superconsciousness descends into the muscular and sensory phase of human life, it's called the waking consciousness. And when waking consciousness becomes attached to the senses and material things, it's called worldly consciousness. And when it's used... To harm oneself or other, I guess we could call it as negative consciousness or whatever word we want. But these are all states of consciousness. So in a practical sense, how do we use this? Well, I use, I use consciousness every day to transform where I am. I start out in the morning and I meditate. Because what I've learned is that when I still the conscious mind, when I can still it, I can tap into higher levels of consciousness. So I do that on a consistent basis. The other way that I use it is I use it uh, questions to tap into higher states of consciousness. Now, not just any kind of question. I use questions that I would call extraordinary questions, questions that I can't answer with my conscious mind. Um, a question could be like, <clears throat> what has to happen for me to expand my radio show to 100 million listeners. I, I don't have the answer to that. But I do know this. <clears throat> if I keep asking that question, eventually the answers will start to reveal themselves to me. I'll start attracting in, in, in this sense, the people, places, and things, and understanding the books, the knowledge, the information, everything I need to be able to start to answer that question. Now, when the question's answered, I have a choice. Do I want to do the work and take the actions that are necessary to get the, the uh, radio show to 100 million listeners, for instance, or not? So you can use questions in the same way. I actually wrote a book years ago. It's uh, If you're on Facebook Live, you can see it. But if you can't, if you're not on Facebook Live, the name of the book is Ask and You Will Succeed. And it's 1,001 Ordinary Questions to Create Extraordinary Results. So that book I wrote because I realized that I could tap into super conscious, um, uh, the super conscious state by asking quantum questions, or qu I call them quantum questions, questions that can't be answered with the human mind. So if this is of interest to you, which I, I, I think it should be, because it's actually very practical. Meditation is very practical. 
it's uh, it's a place where when uh, when we get to, when when I'm stuck with anything, I just meditate, and the answers start to come. I ask those questions, right? Sometimes I use mindfulness. Well, I'm just I, I get outside my comfort zone. I go to a state that uh, 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 an area maybe up in the mountains where I am, and um, uh, I'll start walking around and I'll start looking for things I've never seen before. Looking for things I've never seen before. And what happens is I start to become aware. My expansion of my consciousness starts to expand. And as I do that, magical things seem to happen for me. And I believe they happen for all of us. So we start to, I start to awaken to this, I want to say, superconscious state or eternal state, uh, the unlimited nature of my being. And when I'm in that place, answers start to flow. Uh, for challenges I'm having in, in whatever it is, in business, relationship, in um, my work environments, uh, with my team, whatever it is. So higher consciousness, which is really what I'm talking about, is ever-increasing awareness about our meaning of existence. So it increases our understanding of, our, of who we are. It increases our, uh, what I want to say is our spiritual essence um, or our energetic nature, we start to see things from a completely different mindset. So again, the mindful practices I use are meditation. I use mindfulness while I'm walking slowly and looking at things. I use uh, prayer. I also use um, compassion. I think that's another step that we can use. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can tap into it. But what are we tapping into? What I want to say is we tap in and we develop our intuition. Because your intuition, imagine, uh, we talked about this last week, but imagine if you had 100% of your choices were right. Well, intuition is the soul. 100% of the choices when you're tapped into that is exactly right. So it's very practical, uh, this, con this uh, conversation I'm having with you today. And I want to say this. I've got two guests in the show today. One is uh, Ryan McCormick. Ryan has a show called The Outer Limits. Uh, he's going to be coming up in uh, the next segment. And then later on the show, I have Neil Mintz. And Neil is um, a very successful entrepreneur who has uh, found a way to tap into consciousness that uh, is expanding his joy, his health, his vitality, his family in, in ways that are actually profound. So you want to you wanna listen to this. But I want to say this. If you are really a person that wants to change your life, which is what this show is all about, you know, I hope I'm inspiring some courage in you to change your life. If this is you, then, you know, although it's not easy to master higher states of consciousness because we have to start to master our mind to do that before we can even master ourselves or master consciousness, we have to start understanding that the mind is just a tool. It's a tool to be used for us to be able to take our lives to completely new levels, right? Okay, so it's not easy, but it's not impossible either. When in higher states of consciousness, you know, your thoughts, your words, your actions are energetically charged with positive for, uh, focus and positive forces, okay? So in these higher states, you know, the world around you can be falling apart, but you're not. You are in a place where you're feeling really good, really connected. All righty. So coming up next, we're going to be talking about how to take your life to a completely new level with my guest, Ryan McCormick. We'll be right back. More. Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners, the feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you, who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free 
confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit TheCourageToChangeEverything.com. That's TheCourageToChangeEverything.com. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back to Voices of Courage. I want to let you know that the show is being brought to you by Women's Wisdom, San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven and soul-inspired feminine entrepreneurs. You can find them at uh, womenswisdom.net, womenswisdom.net. I'll just mention this too. I heard the next meeting on August 10th, uh, the most sought-after motivational speaker in the country will be on uh, be speaking. Her name is Lisa Nichols, and you can uh, reserve your seat again at womenswisdom.net. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to Voices of Courage. You can find us on the web at voicesofcourage.us, and you can just ask Siri, Cortana, or Alexa to play Voices of Courage or Voices of Courage podcast. We'll come right up for the um, the current show. All righty. So today on my show, I have an amazing entrepreneur. He's a former TV producer and newspaper editor. Ryan McCormick is the host and executive producer of the Outer Limits of Inner Truth Radio Show. He was born and raised in Long Island, New York. Uh, Ryan, at an early age, knew he was a fringe dweller and was never considered a, quote, normal kid. Ryan's always thought differently, and while he loves to learn, he developed an insatiable curiosity for science and spirituality. Ryan, welcome to the show. Ken, it is a great honor to be with you today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here, my friend. Um, I've been wanting to pick your brain about consciousness and uh, how you've created so much success in all areas of your life for a long time. Well, thank you. And I have to say, at the beginning of the show, the insatiable curiosity for life began when my father was videotaping me falling off the swing set, landing on top of my head. And I think that after my head bounced a few times, that's when the curiosity started. But he's like... We have to get this on camera. I have an intuition, gut feeling that they're going to make a show called America's Funniest Home Videos 10 years from now, and this is going to be a winning video. Uh, oh, I, I, got a, I got a feeling you're right. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> you know, you, uh, uh, I know you have a, a very successful business, but I also know, you know, in, in PR, and I, you know, you're in New York, you're in PR. I mean, you and I have worked together for, what, the last year, and, uh, you know, I've seen what you do. You, you create a lot of um, uh, press for a lot of people, and uh, you do great. But you also have this show, The Outer Limits of, of uh, inner, inner, truth. inner Truth. And um, how did that start? What, what, what were you thinking? How do you go from PR executive to The Outer Limits of, uh, of Inner Truth? Well, at the time I was doing PR, I've also been fascinated by metaphysical concepts, and I had an incredible teacher. His name is Stuart Wilde. He was a metaphysical visionary. He wrote 20 books. He actually had Deepak Chopra and Dr. Wayne Dyer work with him, and he would take Wayne Dyer and Deepak on tours with him. So this gentleman became my favorite author, and I wanted to meet him. And when I met him, I started doing PR for him, and then that relationship just flourished, and 
he died after about, I think it was like three years after knowing him. And then what happened was I wanted to make a show that would pay tribute to him. I wanted to mm. talk about his life. And I think in the course of creating the show, I was having all these conversations with people and I wanted to, they were always saying that I was asking them questions they hadn't been asked before. So I started developing this, this platform where I would interview someone and then I would have them get analyzed by two psychic mediums and an astrologer, and that would be called forensic soul analysis. And what we would do is that we would just take a topic, person, or discussion and go about it in a way that had never been done before. So it's that curiosity has always been there, and the PR has always been there as well. So I guess they both kind of go parallel in terms of passion. Well, I love that, and I and uh, I read uh, many books on Stuart Wilde. I really enjoyed his take on consciousness. Um, Incredible. What, what what were uh, some of the uh, strategies that uh, or or principles that Stuart taught you that really changed your life for the better? Well, probably one of the most profound one was that it's up to you. You have to have total responsibility for your life, and. The world that you see on the outside, all the things that you are seeing on the outside apparently are a direct reflection of what is going on on the inside. I thought that was amazing. And he had this phenomenal quote called, seriousness is a disease of the ego. And he never really, he had this great sense of humor and he was able to teach these interesting metaphysical concepts but not take himself too seriously. I mean, he thought, you know, life's supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to, you know, be all pompous and be on this high horse. He hated the idea of having to, you know, bestow a high, like, kneel before a teacher or before a, a being. You know, he always said that, you know, you're the person that's driving your unconscious engine. So I, I love that. I love the fact that he was all about personal responsibility. And then he did things in a funny type manner. I watched him speak in front of hundreds, of thousands of people, and he would be so energized, and he would be making the crowd laugh as much as he would be teaching them. So I, I have to say that I took a lot of ideas that he had, and I really would like to emulate them, uh, not only in PR, but also the Outer Limits of Inner Truth. Well, you know, my take on this is that, um, you, you know, I love what he said. Seriousness is the disease of the ego. And, yep. you know, we're here in this in this body, in this consciousness, right, Um you know, and we're also in duality, right? There's life and death. There's knowledge and ignorance. There's health and disease. There's changelessness and transitoriness. There's self-control and temptations, discrimination in the blind sense mind, right? There's all of that going on, right? You know, and, and so how do we stay in that place where we're filled with joy and happiness and love? And, you know, how, what did Stuart say? And what do you say about that? Well, I have to say I, am, I would always call myself a progressive work in progress. I, I deal with it on a regular basis, battling, because in addition to doing the radio show and PR, and I'm constantly absorbing the energies and the frequencies of the news that's going on because we're always looking for opportunities for our clients. So I'd say it's, it's a regular challenge. I don't know what other people do. I, you know, some people, you said you meditate at the beginning of the show. I think it's fantastic. I, don't, I try to. It's not something I can do. <laughs> I have dogs and a wife, and I think my, my family has always been a bedrock of stability in terms of you know, bringing peace and comfort. I try to get outside of nature whenever I can, working out, I guess, would be one thing. But Stuart, I think, always talked about having love, tenderness, and generosities, the innate qualities of who you are on the inside. You know, Follow those qualities, treat other people well, really and try to put a lot of love and believe in peace and protection. And a lot of things that he was talking about, Stuart also was making a lot of predictions about the world. And a lot of his predictions are coming true, especially now. So when we first started meeting and talking, he was talking about where the world was going to come about and what things were going to happen. So he was saying to be strong, be, be really strong, be protective, protect your energy. You know, Don't trash your energy. Don't judge other people. Don't lower your energy by filling yourself up with rage. So there are a lot of great concepts that he had, but I think the most important thing to take away from it would be to always have love and tenderness in your heart. Well, you know, I, as, as you're going through those, uh, you know, treat each other well. Don't judge. Don't uh, fill yourself with rage. Uh, you know, be, be joyful, not serious. You know, all those principles. Really, I, I see how uh, all of those apply. In, they're practical. I mean, they're practical yeah. not only for our business, but for our family life, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're an easygoing person and you're compassionate and you're kind, I think people naturally resonate with it. 
And I, I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, people say, oh, it's difficult to be hard. And I mean, I think it's easy because if you walk into a room, you see someone, you shake their hand, you ask how they're doing. I think that it's so wonderful. Just to, It just flows. I think people are naturally in that state. This idea that we're naturally in a state of war or warlike you know, creatures, I, I think it's just learned behavior. We can naturally just be good. But a lot of Stuart's teachings, I find that his teachings are very similar to a lot of other individuals who have come to, to know, love, and respect as teachers. So those principles seem to appear in a lot of people I would consider to be great teachers. Well, I, sh- I sure would, too. So let me ask you this. Um, yeah. what, uh, what was his principles on liberating ourselves, right? Liberating ourselves from, um, you know, poverty, ignorance, um, you know, anger, rage. How, how do we liberate ourselves? It's great to talk about it, but how do we, what are the steps to do that? What, well, what do you use? One of the things he was talked about was the process your shadow. He said that everyone has a shadow or qualities that you're not proud of or things that, you know, part of you that you, you know, you, you say, oh, I don't like the fact that I'm lazy or I have this quality. And instead of condemning that side, instead of hating that side to you, pull that side of you into your life process, your, your, your shadow. And that those could be, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, bad memories, qualities in your subconscious. But he said, really process that. Process yourself. Come to terms in peace with all aspects of who you are. Love yourself. And as you do that, you kind of will progress and go forward. He talked about the ivory tower, that a lot of people are living in these self-imposed egotistical towers, that uh, we're living so much in the ego and not so much in spirit. And when we live in ego, the ego is this insatiable you know, creature that always seeks more admiration, more attention, can never be satisfied. And so a lot of people just try to fill that void. So when it came to developing peace, he always talked about processing the shadow, having a love and, tenor, uh, love and tenderness for others. He said abundance, financial abundance, abundance of all things in life and health are something that should come naturally. A lot of these behaviors, I believe, that he was alluding to were the fact that they were, they were um, trained by society. Society naturally wants to suppress you, wants to, you to conform. It wants Absolutely. You to, you know. Listen, I, uh, I got to cut you off here a second. We'll be right back. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about how to accelerate uh, individual self-discovery. Sure. So we'll do that when we get back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. To uh, stars, uh, <laughs> to Voices of Courage today. And um, today, uh, you know, in our society today, you know, women are finding their voices in all areas of business and life. And one group that's been empowering women for over 25 years is Women's Wisdom. This group of entrepreneurial women meet in, on the Internet and in San Diego. And this month coming up, I think it's August 10th, they have Lisa Nichols, one of the most sought-after motivational speakers in the nation, will be at the event. You can find out a lot more about them at womenswisdom.net. That's womenswisdom.net. 
dot net. Okay, I've been talking to my guest uh, Ryan McCormick, and Ryan uh, has been uh, an amazing uh, mentor uh, to me and to several other people. I know he's in the PR business. He's also got a show called the. Outer Limits of Inner Truth, and he's interviewed people such as visionary Stuart Wilde, Howard Stern, Ron Paul, Michael Levine, and uh, you know, another thing I know about you, Ryan, is that you spectacularly failed at stand-up comedy, comedy oh, dating, horrible. and uh, having patience, uh, taking life too seriously. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you're, you're vulnerable to all that, right? Because yep. I think, you know, we need to be that way if we're going to help others accelerate their own self-discovery. So give me three tips on how people can accelerate their self-discovery and process well, their shadow. Sure, I just want to make a uh, quick note. I not, haven't interviewed Howard Stern yet. I work for him, but uh, okay. that that is something in progress. And my persistence will will last the day because I will I will always pursue people, and I always say, you know, they're either going to come on the show or I'll get a restraining order. So uh, <laughs> okay, well, we're putting that out there, Howard. If you're listening, <laughs> you're you're about ready to show up to the Outer Limits of Inner Truth Radio Show. All right. Uh, all all right. right. So of, anyway, in terms of processing the shadow, I mean, three tips to process the shadow. Probably one of the most important things I would say be to find out what's truly bothering you about being, go to see a great therapist i mean people think that you know they have this stigma sometimes associated with psychology i think it's fantastic i mean if you can find a good psychologist and look at things and look at what values and beliefs are empowering you and what values and beliefs are currently disempowering you holding you back that can change your whole life i think that would be one thing that would be great uh, meditation uh, you know find some other teacher and also um Really listen to yourself, journal, you know, talk about things that bother you and come to terms of who you are. If you, there's a part of you you don't like or you, you disdain, figure out the root cause of that and see if you can figure out a way to bring, come to peace at full terms of that. We did an entire show about shadow processing where we interviewed uh, two psychologists. We also interviewed two metaphysical teachers, and the metaphysical teachers were saying that part of the shadow could be an experience that you you picked up from a previous life incarnation that you're here to resolve. So. I mean, look about it and heal yourself in any way, shape, or form. Some people are rooted in science. Some people are rooted in spirituality. I say do whatever you can to do whatever you need to make yourself feel better and to bring yourself the peace you deserve. You know, I like that, and I like the fact that uh, we ask why. You know, uh, I like the questions like, so why did we, you know, with full responsibility, that's what you started with, so why did we pick our parents? Why did we uh, pick the business that we're in? Why did we? They're they're awesome. They're they're really fun people. They're good people, and I I don't really like that many that many people. I probably had a lot of experiences in my life where I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I, my parents were probably jerks all the other times, but this time I had awesome parents, so I learned like what it's like to have awesome parents. That's probably what the experience is. So I don't know. Well, no, that's that's kind of funny. Well, I'm, I'm 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 now feeling special that I'm one of your friends that you do <laughs> like. That's good. Okay. Well, I don't know. I think, I, I think you talk to the average person; they're all they're all defined by their jobs and their political beliefs. And you know, you talk about anything to do with space exploration, spirituality. Like, oh, you know, it does, I don't know. I I wish people were a little more engaging, a little more curious. I feel like we're kind of coming to this big blob. But you know, I don't remember anything consciously about what happened prior to my life here. Well, I think it's really cool to explore because if you explore. You reveal another piece of yourself. There's this gentleman I had the pleasure of interviewing, Jim Rogers. He's a legendary investor. And he said that when you explore and go someplace different, you have a new experience, it expands your perception. And when I interviewed Dr. Ron Paul a couple of days ago, he said, you know, be curious, be perpetually curious. And that curiosity will lead to other things. And then you have Brian Grazer, the film producer. His curiosity, his entire career was based on the fact that he overheard a conversation outside a win window, and that's how he started his career. So it seems to be an underlying theme is to be curious, be perpetually curious. I, I think all of, the, uh, uh, all of those that have been very successful in this world are very curious. And, and I think, too, that the, um, last week I had Lisa Nichols and uh, Sharon Lecter, you and I were talking about this uh, on my show last week, and... You know, they've interviewed, just like me, hundreds of uh, multimillionaires, very successful people, at least successful in the eyes of uh, uh, material thought, right? So very successful. Um, and, you know, they said basically all, they're all doing the same thing. They're, they're meditating. They're curious. They're exploring. Um, most of them live outside their comfort zone on a continual basis. Uh, just as you heard me start the show out in the beginning, you know, I'm learning how to enjoy jazz, right? That's way outside my comfort zone. 
I would much rather listen to just about any other genre but that. Okay, but I do it because you know what? I want my brain and my mind and my experience in life to be expansive. And I know that when we're listening at different vibrations, it, uh, you know, music is a vibration, right? When we listen to uh, words or music, at you know, our minds start to resonate and vibrate at that level too, right? But anyway, the point is, they're all kind of doing the same thing, right? I mean, I don't, they're processing their shadow. They've processed their shadow. They're looking at what's working, what's not working in their lives. And there, as a result of that, they're taking their lives to a completely new level. Would you agree or not agree? What, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I have to see. I, I mean, I have to talk to each one of those individuals. I, people who are very successful, I think they, they tend to have a zest and passion for, for life, and they are taking chances, and they are, they are pushing out of the comfort zones. I wish I'd pushed out of my comfort zones more. Uh, yeah, I tend to, once I like something, I tend to be very like comfortable with something. I stay with it, but I almost feel like if I push out of my comfort zones, I'd probably you know, get to other different places, but, um, you know, I'm Successful people I get talk, it. but they seem to have a passion. So, Ryan, real quick, uh, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, people that are conscious that want to want to take their PR bu- the business and their media exposure to a whole new level. How do people get a hold of you? They can hold me by going to goldenmccormick dot com. G U L D M A N M C C O R M I C K dot com. P R. We get you a lot of TV, radio, newspaper interviews. And if you want to check out the Outer Limits of Inner Truth, go to outerlimitsradio dot com. Okay. One more time. It's uh, Golden. Say that again. The website. Yeah, Goldman, G-O- Goldman. Goldman McCormick. G U L D M A N M C C O R M I C K dot com. Uh, that's a PR uh, company and. Uh, Outer Limits Radio is uh, you know, Outer Limits of the Truth is OuterLimitsRadio dot com. All righty, Ryan. Thank you so much for being part of this yeah, show it today. Was a great honor. A lot of respect for you and for all the things that you're doing. So thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you. I hope you come back and join us again. We'll definitely do so. Okay, coming right up, I've got uh, Neil Mintz. Neil is going to be talking about consciousness and the importance of meditation. Uh, how to go from scarcity, abundance, consciousness, and it's going to be an amazing interview. So we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power, and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase Increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage, and now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back to Voices of Courage today. Today, we are talking about the courage to expand what is possible. And the show is being brought to you by Women's Wisdom, women connecting women in business and friendship for over 25 years. This amazing group of entrepreneurial women meets on the Internet and in San Diego, and you can find them at www.womenswisdom.net. That's womenswisdom.net. All right, courage to expand what's possible. Hmm. Well, listen, I uh, have a new book that's coming out. And it's called uh, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. 
what I've been doing uh, at this segment of each show is to just read you a little blurb of the book. The book was designed for individuals that want to reprogram their thinking and on a daily basis get a little courage, uh, dose of courage, dose of wisdom, some specific uh, quantum questions, which are questions that we generally don't answer with our conscious mind, and also some action steps. So that's what the book's about. It's 365 days. You sign up for it at uh, uh, the courage to change everything.com, the courage to change everything.com. Okay, this is day 165. What is at the summit of courage? I think it's freedom. It's freedom that comes from with the knowledge that no earthly thing can break you. That's Paula Giddings. Your thoughts will limit you or they will free you. Your mind is the principal creative instrument readily available for you to utilize and establish your pathways to success. In fact, it will create whatever pattern of thought you attach to it. Here's what I mean. Right now, in this minute, thoughts are flowing past your mind. Whatever you decide to focus on will expand. For instance, Try saturating your mind with the thought that you are unstoppable and you will have the most amazing day ever. In fact, if you stay focused on being unstoppable long enough, you will unleash an unstoppable force within your life. You will start to feel unstoppable because what you are focusing on will transform how you feel. The truth is that success or failure is nothing more than a thought. I have closely watched my coaching clients over the years and I'll tell you this. It wasn't the best looking, the smartest, or even the ones that made the most money who were the most successful. It was the ones who developed the power of their minds to break out of their limitations. Once they made up their minds to create something new, nothing stood in their way. Today ask, what can I do to increase my determination and realize the power of my mind? How can I improve my knowing and certainty that I'll bring forth my greatness? If I stay focused on being unstoppable every day, what would my life be like? The actions, find the courage to take two consecutive actions towards generating your dreams. As you do, notice how your mind power and magnetism increases, drawing towards you everything you need to generate success. So imagine every day that you're tuning in, you're reprogramming your mind, you're thinking about thoughts of like such as being unstoppable. How would that change your life for the better? I think it would help you every single day become more of who you really are. Tap deeper into the qualities of yourself and be able to expand yourself in greater ways. Again, you can uh, pre-order the book right now, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. Um, at uh, uh, the um, courage to change everything.com courage to change everything.com now I'd like to introduce my next guest his name is Neil Mintz after retiring from a successful career in business Neil now focuses his full attention on his spiritual path and supporting others in their soul awakening his current passions are teaching meditation and leading workshops on personal and spiritual growth Neil has been studying metaphysics at Spiritual Arts Institute for seven years and is currently an associate teacher. He is also certified with the Institute as a direct divine light healer, which he practices regularly. Neil, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. How are you, man? Excellent, thank you. Good. Okay. So, um, you've heard the show. You've heard us talking a little bit about consciousness. What What was it that you know triggered you to start on this path of awakening um, into into consciousness? Okay. Um, well, it's a, a long story, but I'll kind of cut to the chase here. Uh, essentially, and this is, um, I think, uh, you know, many people have shared this kind of story where we look for all the worldly things. Uh, that we feel are going to give us what we want. So I had a, a you know a long career in business and was always uh, going after um, and and not just things that were material, but even things that had a lot of value, like um, you know a beautiful family and choosing where I wanted to live, uh, which is in Southern California. Uh, I became very successful in business, and a lot of my quest was to feel to to fill up a void that was within me. And I always felt that well, once I achieve, you know, all these things that were on my bucket list, 
you know, that would be, you know, that would make me happy. You know, that's kind of how I defined success. And that's kind of how the, my upbringing, um, you know, is really what, what drove me to there. And, and really the, the initial turning point for me was uh, I got to a point, it was, I was probably around 45, and I realized that all these things I was driving for my entire life, uh, I achieved. I, tr- I achieved, you know, um, you know, in, uh, material, um, um, you know, possessions, obviously, but also, uh, you know, financial independence and a wonderful family. And I had all this, but I still didn't feel any different inside. And, and I didn't know, even know where to turn. I wasn't, uh, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't uh, participating in religion or even spirituality. And, you know, that led me to uh, yoga and meditation. It was for the first time when I was able to quiet my mind somewhat and, and feel that inner peace. And then it was uh, very clear to me that all those things I was chasing my entire life weren't what I really uh, wanted. It was just something that I kind of uh, took on from society. Mm-hmm. So that, I would say that was the real turning point for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, okay, because I think a lot of people get to that place where they're, um, you know, they're in business, they've uh, they've accomplished a lot, they've made a lot of money, I know, you know, we, we meet these people all the time, and yet there's something inside of them that just doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel like they uh, they have it all, They th- you know, they have it all materially, but there's something missing, they, exactly. did, can you exactly. relate to that? And do you- yeah. Well, that, that was exactly right, it was yeah. still, and I couldn't put my finger on it, you know, it's kind of like you, you know when you're happy, but I never really experienced it, even as a kid. So I always felt there was just need to be something more. There was that kind of that, that I call a void. It wasn't a depression or anything. It was just a void. It was I knew there was something more, right. and I just didn't know where to turn. Right. So when you got to that place, um, what, were the, what were the signs for you that things weren't necessarily working right, right? I would say uh, emotionally, that's the that's the first sense. I think that that um, you know our emotions will tell us the truth of our state of being. You know, as you were talking about consciousness before, uh, you know, we can we can tune into our emotions and know right there. So it you know my I would say general emotional state was uh, kind of this low level anxiety, mm-hmm. this this feeling of insecurity, worry, always looking at you know the future. And not really being present in the moment, so that that was that was my indication, and I didn't even, you know, co- consciously realize it. But now in my everyday life, uh, I always use my emotions, and I'm very attuned, very aware when emotionally something isn't feeling right, and that tells me right there, okay, I've got to look at my thinking or my actions or my words. There's something out of sync in my life, and it's being reflected in my emotions. And for me, that's uh, kind of like a almost like a pain receptor. You know, we know that, um, you know, if we put our hand on the stove, you know, we feel pain and it tells us, take your hand off the stove. So it, it's through emotions that um, are, are really a great gift to us if we listen to them. You know, a lot of people are in a, in a place where they are, um, they're, they're, there's lack, there's limitation. They're, they're worried about not having the right amount of money for their business, for their home life, for their travel, for their tra- Whatever it is, it's scarcity mentality. Correct. You know, and, and I sense that in your story, you were at one point, even though you had all these things, there was still a scarcity there or a lack or something going on. In, in, I, I think you described it as, as emotional. How do people transition that with using the spiritual path, for instance? Right. Okay, well, that's, a, that's a great, great point. And, and, you know, a lot of it is it's our belief systems, right? So we have limiting beliefs. And if we believe things are limited, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So, uh, you know, from a spiritual or metaphysical perspective, you know, the truth is that the world is filled with abundance. There, are, you know, just look at nature, just look at space. Uh, and, and even the, the truth and the fact is when you even look at, at the world right now, there's tremendous abundance. There might be a great, obviously, a great disparity between those who have and those that don't. Uh, but there's a state of consciousness that we feel there is a lacking. So it, it is about um, really tuning into the truth of abundance and then changing uh, you know, our thoughts, our words, our actions so that they're in alignment with the truth the truth of abundance and prosperity. Well, that's easy to say. And, you know, sometimes that's hard to accomplish. You know, it's like, you know, we can say, yeah, I want to align my thoughts with uh, something new. But, boy, that's that's difficult. You know what? I've got to uh, take a break here. When we get back, let's, let's talk about that. And let's uh, figure out how in the heck we do that on a consistent basis to have more joy, happiness, and fun in our lives. We'll be right back. 
We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, welcome back to Voices of Courage today, where we're talking about how to expand what is possible. And our show today is being sponsored by Women's Wisdom. You can find them at womenswisdom.net. I know they are the premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven and soul-inspired female entrepreneurs. Again, womenswisdom.net and um, amazing group of women. Hope you'll uh, check them out. Today, I'm talking to Neil Mintz. Uh, Neil and I are talking about consciousness. We're talking about how to go from scarcity to abundance consciousness right now. And... um, we were just talking about that, Neil. So what are the practical ways somebody can do that? Okay. Well, th- I would say there's, there's, two, there's many practices, but I would say the two main practices uh, that I use and believe in, the first one, and you've mentioned it earlier in the show, is meditation. Mm-hmm. And the particular meditation uh, technique and system that I use, uh, which was brought in by my teacher, Barbara Martin, uh, who's a uh, mystic clairvoyant, is using light work. Uh, and what that means is that light is actually, um, we're talking about consciousness as well, it is the, the channel, the conduit of consciousness. And consciousness looks, and for example, we're talking about abundance. Abundance is, is a consciousness. It's, it, there's a consciousness of abundance or there's a, con- a lower consciousness of scarcity. And through bringing in specific light rays, um, it can help us release um, from our subconscious mind, if we have any old beliefs that aren't serving us, any, any lack, uh, scarcity type, limit, limited thoughts, it can help release that. And uh, with other light rays, like uh, turquoise in particular, is one that brings in prosperity. It's the ray of prosperity. And you could even do, talking about real practical, uh, our, my teacher tells us to even surround ourselves, you know, to wear colors that are vibrant. So if we want um, you know, because it, it literally has, because it has that ray, it has the, that uh, whole energetic ray. Energetic mm-hmm. ray. Mm-hmm. So we can wear clothes that that reflect it. But more importantly, it's it's about uh, tuning in our mind to it and bringing in it, bringing this in through med, uh, through meditation. Well, you know, I, I love that, and I and I know that color. You know, there are certain colors that make us uh, feel you know joyful. I mean, you know, there there are yellows or or. You know, for me, I mean, even indigo blues, I feel uh, just a deep sense of peace with. So I think we resonate with that. But I love the idea of wearing the color that you want to feel like, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's that's important. I mean, it's, it'll remind you all day long because I think through the day, people go, they, you know, they're in a high positive state. Sometimes they go down to a lower state, then back to high and low. You know, I mean, and then we get longer and longer times where we're just staying in higher states. But I think that's a good reminder for everybody. Yeah. I mean, everything has vibration. So color does have vibration. And in fact, it's interesting when I started, uh, uh, you know, as a student with my teacher and I started realizing the meaning and the conscious, the uh, basically the energy that it, that uh, colors hold. Yes. I, I looked at my wardrobe and it was all kind of a lot of gray and a lot of black and 
uh, a lot of these kind of muddy colors, which he says, you know, holds a lower consciousness. I had to completely <laughs> change my wardrobe to, right. to more vibrant colors. And it, it really, you know, I really, when I started realizing it really does, uh, it really does change yeah. um, our, our thinking and our just, just in general, our vibration. We start, we start holding something in a, in a different light. Um, you know, one thing I love about you, Neil, is because I know you've been uh, you know, so extremely successful in business and sold your companies for many millions of dollars. And you are a, a fellow that practices one of the principles of success, and that is you have a teacher and you're learning, and you continue to learn, and you continue to expand. And I think that that is such a mistake that a lot of people make. They get caught up in roots and ruts, and they just get, you know, wake up in the morning, have their cup of coffee, turn on their news, go to work, you know, do, do their deal, come back home, do the same thing day in and day out. Um, you know that that I, I, how do we how do we encourage people to break through those patterns? I know a lot of people come to you for healing, like when they come to you, you know, for their own healing. What is it that they they are asking for usually? Okay, uh, great question. And uh, you know, something in their life isn't working for them, and and they recognize it, but again, they don't really know where to turn. And because I kind of went through that, I do have some background in understanding it. And often, uh, well, let me go back to the point you made, which I really liked, you know, about learning. Uh, you know, the whole concept of retiring. I sold my business uh, about 10 years ago. I'm young and healthy, and there's a lot of things I can do. But the fo- somehow I was drawn to self-improvement. How can I improve my life? And when I started, um, when I, I, actually the first time I heard um, this statement from my teacher saying that, approximately 50% of the time we do not reach our potential, the potential that we're, we're meant to reach. And also we don't fulfill the purpose. We're all here for a particular purpose. And when I, when I heard that, it just resonated so strongly with me. So I had a very strong um, inclination, a very strong motivation that in this lifetime, I don't want to you know, miss the mark on that. Uh, you know, my teacher calls this world a school. So mm-hmm. if we think it from that terms, we can look at every situation in our life and say, what do we have to learn from it? And that's often, to answer your question, what I uh, will tell my client, you know, if they're having a relationship issue or a money issue, I'll say, you know, what's the hidden message there? What, what is this trying to teach you if you look at this as a lesson? And often they can answer the question themselves. They can realize why it is that they've created and they have created that situation for themselves. And once we know how we created it, we can then make the changes we need to create a new reality. Well, I know when, you know, it was, uh, you know, I know you personally, so I know that it, uh, it wasn't a, a quick find to find your teacher, that you explored a lot of different other paths. And when you found Barbara Martin at the, um, at the Spiritual Arts uh, Institute, um, it just, it seemed to open up for you. And, and, I, and I would guess that, um, knowing you, Neil, that you know you wanted to realize your full potential, you wanted to fulfill that life purpose, and possibly even leave legacy for your family. I'm not sure about that, but is that is that what people can look forward to when they when they come into the path like this? Right, uh, correct. I mean, we we call it an ascension path, mm-hmm. uh, and often it's it's even making up ground from if we do believe this past life. Uh, I certainly do. Uh, it, it, and evidence, some evidence of that is often we have these. Uh, memories that we kind of just know uh, things and we know that we didn't learn it in this lifetime. Mm. And part of the metaphysical path and finding a teacher is to reawaken uh, those hidden memories that are in our subconscious mind. And they're there and they're there to be awakened so that we can actually fulfill our purpose. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yes, to answer your question, um, when I found my spiritual teacher, even though I was, I do uh, acknowledge I was making some growth and headway prior to that, just with meditation, because uh, that was a practice I've had for many years. But once I got on the metaphysical path, it, the whole tempo was very different because I had a true awakened teacher guiding the way for That's me. That's great. So I, I do want to mention, um, for those that want to find out a little bit more about uh, spiritual arts, where they can go. I think it's uh, spiritualarts.org. Is that right? Correct. The website? So it's spiritual. Arts, A-R-T-S dot org, spiritualarts.org, and you can find out a little bit more about uh, Barbara Martin and uh, Dimitri. Dimitri, tell me a little bit about Dimitri. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dimitri uh, was a student of Barbara going back some 35 years, and Barbara's now 89 years old. So Barbara, um, uh, um, 
Uh, right now, Dimitri co-writes the books with her and is the main teacher, phys- you know, physically doing it. And he, in his own right, is an, an awakened teacher. Uh, so they work together. She works very much on the energetic level, and he works both on the energetic le- uh, level That's as well great. as being a very articulate speaker. So I, I just want to uh, – we're running out a little time here, so I want to go over some of the books and blogs that are available uh, – or blogs and videos, sorry, uh, on the website, Overcoming Obstacles and Realizing Your Life Purpose. How Does the Aura Reflect Your Life? Unlocking the Power of Numerology. How Does the Aura Help Me in My Spiritual Growth? The Secret Destiny of America. If that resonates with you, you want to find out a little bit more about uh, uh, Neil's path and uh, what he's up to, go to spiritualarts.org, spiritualarts.org. Any final thoughts here, Neil? Well, uh, I appreciate you having me on and the whole theme of the show because we're all here to... You know, change ourselves, change our our way of consciousness, the way that we show up in this life. You're feeling something inside that's not quite there yet. You're feeling like maybe Neil and his story where you've been on a path, but you want something more. I encourage you to start to ask better questions and start to explore. Get outside your comfort zone. So you can pre-order my bo- uh, latest book at thecouragetochangeeverything.com, and you can find all our replays at voicesofcourage.us. That's voicesofcourage.us. I hope you'll tell your friends about the show, like us on Facebook, and until next time, live courageously and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities by visiting voicesofcourage.us. Be sure to join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Well,